Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 RC or release candidate. iOS 18.1 RC is available to developers and soon to public beta testers, typically by the time you're watching this video or the following day. And this particular update came in at a very large 7.05 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 pro max and is about the same size between six and seven gigabytes on the other devices here as well. Along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 18.1 RC, Mac OS 15.1 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.1 RC, along with Vision OS 2.1 RC and iPad OS 17.7.1. There is no Watch OS 11.1 RC just yet, but I would expect it within a day or so. Now this is supported on all iOS 18 supported devices, even though it brings Apple intelligence, it brings many other features we'll talk about in a moment. And if you are a beta tester or developer, leave this on until the, the final version or public version comes out typically in a week or so. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but leave this on as you'll probably have either another update or we can turn it off the day it releases and see if there is an update. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22B82. And as long as there's no additional issues or problems with this update, this should be the final build released to the public. We just have it a little bit early. Now there is no modem update in this particular version. So if you're coming from beta six or beta seven, the RC does not have a modem update. However, if you're on iOS 17.7 or 18 or 18.0.1, you will have a modem update. As far as new features, well, let's take a look at the first one. And the first one has to do with Apple intelligence. Now, Apple intelligence is going to start rolling out with iOS 18.1, and that's available on the iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max and all of the iPhone 16 phones. However, like I mentioned earlier, that doesn't mean there won't be additional features. We'll cover those in just a moment, but if you want to check out the description for the chapters where you can just jump ahead to the new features for everything else, but Apple intelligence, as long as you're in the United States, and as far as the overall language is set to English, you can be outside of the United States technically. Once this is enabled, you'll be able to use this. And it brings different tools that I've talked about in other videos. So I'll go over them briefly here, but I have another video I'll link in the description that covers everything in depth. So we have writing tools and that allows you to use that throughout pretty much any app that's Apple's app, third-party apps can add it as well. But if we go into notes, you'll see here's the notes for today's release. If we go to the writing tools here, it brings up things such as proofread, rewrite, we can rewrite it in friendly, get key points and more. So if we go to key points, for example, it will read this and then give us key points that it thinks are in this overall note. So you'll see writing tools, Siri improvements, and much more. So we have those features as well as some others such as proofread, rewrite, and more. We also have an updated look for Siri. Again, if you have Apple intelligence enabled, it looks a little bit different, sort of highlights the outside edge, or you can double tap the bottom to type to Siri. So that's a little bit better. We also have better photos search. So if we go into photos, so we can search by photos with more context here. So maybe you'll see here's sob, sob. It brings up anything with the word sob in it or sob black car and it brings up a black sob. So it sort of understands context a little bit better. And then also photos gets additional features and under memories, we can create a new memory based on context. So if you want to type any of these a day at the park with an Epic song, it will create that in real time for you. So you can type whatever you want. Again, I've covered this in depth before. If we go into a photo within a photo, if we go to our editing options and then go to clean up, we'll have the option to clean this up. We can tap on things it's suggesting to get rid of them. So if we tap on this one, it will get rid of it out of the overall picture. Let's see how well it does. So it got rid of them. It's not the greatest in certain situations, but you can actually highlight something and it will sort of recognize what you're highlighting sort of recognize that very well and then it will delete it. I'm not sure how well it will do in this sort of situation, but we can tap to delete. There it goes. And it didn't do a great job in some scenarios. It does a very good job though. And within a photo. So if I go to edit and go into clean up again, if I just highlight myself, I can pixelate my face 
if maybe you have a couple people in the background, you can typically just tap on them and they'll pixelate. If I go into mail, we don't have the newly redesigned mail app yet, but we can go in the upper right here and have priority email. And we also have smart reply as well. So if I go to reply as we're typing, it can give suggestions. And of course we have Apple intelligence to sort of review what we've typed. And if we go into messages, we also have smart replies down here at the bottom. So these are things that they've added that just make it easier to respond to people. Also, if you record something with your voice, whether that's call recording, we'll take a look at in just a moment or something else, such as maybe you have a long note that you've actually added a voice recording into, it can actually summarize that after it's done. Now, if we go into phone call recording, that's something we get even on older phones as well. So in phone call recording, so we have an iPhone 11 here, let me go ahead and place a phone call. And once in a phone call, you'll see in the upper left, we have this new icon tap on it. It will announce the call will be recorded probably for different reasons around the world. And now it says it's recording the call and we can take notes on this call. So you'll see the actual timeline here. You can stop it or just take notes while you're recording the call and it's recording everything I'm saying. And once I stop it, it will bring us into a note here. And in the note, we can see our call, go into our call and we'll have the transcripts. If you've enabled this as well, we can play this back and the transcripts even work on older calls. However, the summaries do not, that's part of Apple intelligence, but this should work on older phones as well. With this update, Apple adds the ability to use AirPods pro two as hearing aids. So you can actually do a hearing test. You have to have the latest firmware or beta firmware, but if we go into settings, and then we go to our AirPod settings. You'll see here, we now have a couple new options. The first one is for hearing protection. If we go into this, we can have loud sound reduction and then have ear tip fit test. So it's sort of a new menu here. And then if we go back, we have hearing assistance. So we can take a hearing test or go into hearing assistance and you'll see if you have mild or moderate hearing loss, AirPods pro can work as a hearing aid to boost voices and sounds around you. It also has media assist. AirPods pro can make adjustments that improve the clarity of music videos and calls. So you can actually take the test, cancel it. And then you have a couple different options for that. Everything else is seemingly the same, but you will need to have the beta update of seven B one three or one three D. And once this is enabled, they'll probably release this update fairly soon. But if you're on the beta, you can actually use this right now. So let me go ahead and take the hearing test and we'll go ahead and tap, get started. It says, are you 18 or older? Are you currently experiencing allergies? No. Have you been in a loud environment like a concert? No. We'll tap next. Now it says find a quiet place where you can focus and take the test and it will alert you if there's too much noise. So let me try this out. It checks the fit and make sure it's quiet enough. Now it says test complete show results. And it says your test indicates little to no hearing loss. Keep your hearing healthy and no changes needed. So it actually shows the difference between each ear and then we can tap done. So if we want to use that, we could use it or turn it off if we don't need it within your settings. If we go down to apps and then messages within messages, if we scroll down to where we have RCS messaging, we now have the option for RCS business messages. It says your carrier will send, receive and verify your RCS business messages. This has to be supported by a business and also has to be supported by your carrier, but it is something that's new. There's also something new with game center. So if you actually use game center, there's an update here where you can actually invite someone from contacts. So if we go into contacts within contacts, it actually shows game center. Now, if we go into that, we can view the other person's game center or send them an invite. And once you're a friend with them, you can see the different games they've played and their overall achievements. Also with the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max, you'll now be able to record a spatial photos and videos and on the iPhone 16 pro max with the latest version. If we go into our camera control here, go to our photos, half press, you'll see we have tone. If I double press and maybe move over to where we have cameras, half press again, we can flip over to the selfie camera. So that's something that's new in this update as well. As far as anything else, well, in the control center, there's new connectivity options that are full size. So we no longer have to have them in this little icon sort of update area that they have. And they're a little bit bigger here as well. So if you want to add Wi-Fi or you want to add airplay, those are now available here along with Bluetooth. As far as resolved issues, Apple did actually fix quite a few things here in podcasts. They actually have an issue where unplayed episodes were marked as played. This should now be fixed and working properly.
Also, if maybe you were in your camera and recording video in 4k 60, sometimes the device, when it got warm, could experience stutters. If you're scrubbing through the video playback in photos, that's actually been resolved this time around. If you're using your phone as a digital car key, so maybe you walk up to your car and it should unlock, or you should be able to start your vehicle passive entry after restoring from a backup or transferring directly from another phone sometimes wouldn't work. So this should now be resolved in this update. If you have an iPhone 16 or 16 pro model, sometimes they were restarting with the previous beta or with iOS 18.0.1. Apple's acknowledged this and fixed it in this update. Something they haven't acknowledged that seems to be fixed is airdrop seems to be much, much better now. And within airdrop, maybe I'll send this to the iPhone 11 that we have here on the same version. We'll go ahead and send it tap accept since it's on a different account. It should show right up nice and fast. It works as you would expect. And sometimes it would sort of stop halfway between. I'm not seeing that again. There's still issues that I'm seeing here. If I go into messages within messages, if I go to my emoji keyboard, there's missing emoji while they don't seem to really do anything. We can use the other ones, but if we tap here, it doesn't really do anything. So that's definitely a bug that's still there. Not everyone sees this, but it's under this specific recents option. So if we go into there, go back, go back into the recents, you'll see it's just sort of blank for me in specific areas. This does seem to fix the touch issues as well, as well as the display saturation bug. In fact, it seems to be the other way around. It oversaturates now when we go to the home screen. So I'm not sure why that is, but it seems like that's the case. iOS 18.1 should release to the public next Monday. Typically Apple releases big updates on Mondays, So I would expect it on the 28th of October, 2024. Apple did say that the hearing aid features are coming next week. That lines up with this. The RC is usually the Monday before or a week before the public release typically. So I would expect that. And then iOS 18.2 betas could be as soon as maybe next Tuesday or Wednesday, or they could push that into November. We'll have to wait and see, but that's when we'll see different Apple intelligence features such as Genmoji and image playground, maybe the redesigned mail app then as well. As far as the overall performance, well, so far it seems to be very smooth upon initial installation. It seemed to be nice and smooth, maybe going through promotion. It seems very smooth. And on the iPhone 11, I'm seeing the same thing. So if we go into music, wait for it to load here, we'll go into the same place again, just swipe, scroll up. Things need, seem to be fairly smooth overall, just going in and out of applications. Most people running the earlier betas said the same thing, and this seems to be even better. When it comes to the overall heat of the device, well, it's definitely processing a lot in the background, probably due to Apple intelligence. So it's staying a little bit warm, not too hot, but that's fine. It is a little bit warm processing in the background typically, and I'm not really seeing any issues here as far as that goes. When it comes to overall battery life, if we go into battery, this will take a few days to measure since it's processing so much, but my battery health is at 100% with 26 cycles. And if we go to yesterday, hopefully this improves, but I had two hours and 40 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 10 minutes of screen idle time. I use just under 50% of my battery. So it seems to be getting me through the day. Most of the time. Now the betas have progressively gotten better. So, so far it seems to be pretty good. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.1 RC, well, this should be the final version released to the public. If you've been wanting to try it out, wait for the public version or the public beta version and try it out. If you're on a previous beta developer beta, definitely install this. And then if there is issues, be sure to give feedback in the feedback app. If you still have it here, if you've turned off the beta profile update already, then you won't have this if you've rebooted. So just make sure that's enabled. As far as benchmarks, I did take a look at those. These should improve over time, but if we go into Geekbench 6, I ran it on both the iPhone 11 and 16 Pro Max. On the 16 Pro Max, again, it's a little bit low 3,401 for single core, 8,387 for multi core. But that's because I just installed it. I would expect it to get a little bit better over the next few days, but single core is pretty good already. So I expect this to be a pretty smooth and good update as far as performance. And other than that, I'm sure we'll see some additional changes and updates people have found. And if we do, of course, I'll talk about them later in the week in the weekend follow-up video that I typically post on Saturday. If you found anything else or noticed any differences as far as bug fixes and more, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.